What's up, y'all? So today we are gonna do more antiques. That's all right, yeah, more antiques. We've got two Yale, uh, number three and number four. <laughs> Mortis locks, that, those numbers don't mean anything. We talked about these in Saturday Morning Live. If you have not had a chance to tune in, we broadcast every Saturday, 11 to one central standard time make sure and tune in we we're on like episode 37 coming up this saturday so if you get a chance tune in 11 to 1 say hi to everybody uh it's an, it's an epic meeting of lock professionals from around the world so we looked at the insides of these guys on that i have to make keys for these there's nothing wrong with them and they're also three lever even though one says three one says four that typically corresponds to where is that two or three that's three that typically corresponds to the key number and also these have uh these have some stampings right there on the bottom which uh looks like it was kind of hand done i've never seen these on yale so this may just signify whatever maybe doors or something they were on but they're both handed the same so you take a picture before you get started to make sure you remember which side the angle is on. But uh, they also have this little viewing window right there. So that makes it a lot easier to make keys for. A lot of them do have viewing windows. And when you look at these, they're, they're actually thicker. The, the standard for US in the, in the United States, the standard thing for old mortise locks is gonna be your cheapy, which I don't have any handy. I probably should have grabbed it before the video started, but uh, just cheapy single lever mortise locks on old that use old glass knobs, stuff like that. And, uh, and you can usually run to the hardware store and get a key that kind of looks like this. It may look kind of like this, but have a plastic tip. That's typically what you're going to find. Uh, and it will also be, uh, you see two packs for sale in, in a lot of key little kiosk areas. There's a pack of two. Please don't get those. Please, please don't get those, y'all. Those, they're horrible. They may work the lock if you've got a single lever lock, but they're very flimsy. They'll break. You don't want one of these to break in the lock, especially if it's locked <laughs> and closed. So uh, we're going to look at why these won't work for these, why it's a bad idea to, uh, to buy just cheapy keys, period. Uh, and, and for these, they're three lever. Now those overseas, it's very common in certain parts of the world uh, to still use mortise deadlocks like that. And they go from three to five lever. I think the British insurance standard is what, five lever? I don't know, but let's look at some of them. I've had some of my wonderful subscribers over the years send me different mortise deadlocks. And we're gonna look at this one, even though this isn't a deadbolt version, I've got a nice chub. Uh, and that'll tell us the, the insurance standard right there. It's got to be five lever front and back, right? And then we, we kind of go up in here and look at the keys and see how the see how the keys are cut there. So overseas, it's still very common to be using mortise locks like that. And then this is a I think this is going to be a three lever. Uh, so when we get done with the key, if we look at this key and we go look at some American versions of those keys, we can see that uh, in, in this particular case, I've got, I've got several blanks up here. Now there are some pre-cuts and I've got a couple of them down here. We're gonna look at these little pre-cuts and when I say pre-cut, that means they're already cut. These are in the Ilco catalog as master keys. And then we'll move over to the standard 49B that I showed in the beginning. Hold up the mortise lock, and then we're gonna we're just gonna try this. Just just pretend like we ordered this online, and we're gonna go up to the door and try it. Now we see we see these little wings are kind of cut out on the side. That serves the same purpose as these notches. However, this is designed again to fit a large variety of locks. So uh, the differences in these two, this has a smaller post, this has a thicker post. We can go ahead and discard this one immediately, which is the 3B, because it is too big of a post. And if we bring our union lock key over here, we can also see that it is too big of a post. 
So that is one consideration is the size of the diameter of where this is. And then we're gonna try this one and voila, it goes in. And look, it even turns, voila, voila. Do we have a key? Well, turn it all the way and look, no, it does. Look at that. So it comes out, that's wonderful. Look at that, I have a key for this lock. I didn't have to do a thing. Okay, watch that. All right, so what happened there was the key threw the bolt out, okay. Somehow managed to pass those levers, but when it, when it did, it didn't throw it all the way out. See those, they didn't snap back down. Watch in that window right there. And I'm gonna pull the bolt out. See how they fell down? All right, so what happens is, uh, number one, we've got it thrown out, and let's just say we close the door. Never close the door when you're working on these. Try it many times before you feel assured because it's the right key. So we just got the door locked, and guess what? It may have locked it, but because of how those levers are cut, they're gonna be a little bit deeper on one side. Uh, and guess what? We just locked the door, and uh, and you may be locked out of your room. So bad idea to do that. Uh, and then we're gonna take this uh, like this master key right here. It's already got nice cuts in it, and uh, this is this is gonna be what our key ends up looking like. Not not exactly, you know, not exactly with those exact cuts in the center, but the front and back is what throws the bolt out. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this in here, watch that window, and turn the key, and, and look, we've got, we've got one lever goes up, but the middle doesn't. That means uh, that that middle cut right there is too deep. So in the particular key for this number three lock, it's gonna have uh, probably about that deep, but this middle will be actually sticking up a little bit. Uh, so there, this is a, just a different version of that key. It's a little bit narrower. Uh, and also, we've got to take it open. I don't know if there is wards on the sides. There may or may not be. Typically, there is. But we'll take them apart and take a look at the levers. Oh, before I go away, the two that we're going to choose, we have a 9B and 512B. There also is a 5B, which I'm out of. So I'm, I'm obviously not going to be using the 5B. Probably would have been a better choice. But uh, we're just going to use the 9B because I've got plenty of them. The 12B is a little bit longer, pretty much the same. It's got a wider flag. We don't need the wider flag. But uh, we do we definitely are going to be having to grind down and cut. And again, the key is going to end up looking kind of like that when we're done. Uh, let's take a look at the insides of the locks. Now, most of the time, these guys are not heavily spring-loaded. You always need to be careful taking off covers of any mortise lock because it can pop apart on you if there's a spring. But on these, even the three-lever, most of the time you can just safely pull the cap off. Always kind of hold it right here like when I pop it off just to make sure. And there we go. Once the cover is off, if everything is staying where it's supposed to, Go ahead and take a picture of it so you know what we're looking at. Also, we hadn't hadn't talked about that issue, but we do have a little bit of a bend on this bottom. Looks like it maybe somehow got bent, so we're gonna have to straighten that up in the very end. Uh, but yes, there we go. Very standard of a US style mortise lock setup. This one just has three levers, so they are a little bit more secure than your average US mortise lock. Stay there, come on off. Interior. These may have been on exterior doors back in the day. We are not coming off, are we? What are you doing? No, that didn't want to come off. There we go. Okay, so 
the levers will spring. Now, I don't know when these came to me, somebody may have taken these apart, taken those levers out and put them back in. The key has to, has to have symmetry. See how this key has symmetry, like these two are the same and this is a different, because when you, when you come in from the other side of the door, it has to operate uh, correctly. If you look at any of these keys, they are gonna be in a way symmetrical so that you can use it from each side of the door. If you're only using it from one side of the door, it doesn't matter because this would be contacting one lever versus another. I'll just go ahead and put this in here. Hold it kind of carefully. Yeah, and then you see how that see how that works right there. Goes in. We'll set the lever. So in this particular case, let's see, come in from the other side. And uh, see on one side it passes by the lever. And on the other side, the, the tip actually contacts that lever right there. So, uh, and the bolt is offset just a bit. So we see, we see the bolt there. And then when we're putting the key in and, and turning it, what happens is it'll either contact the bolt or bypass it in this case there see, see that's that's passing by the bolt which is putting it in the position to let it withdraw but it cannot withdraw the bolt because obviously these levers are cut incorrectly so just looking at this one we can see using this as a guide we can see that uh, it's definitely not lifting this lever up enough. So that one's gonna be shallow cut because it's got a, the blade, the full blade has to go up and push it up. Uh, and this one, let's see the next one. See, you got, we've got cuts on each side. One side, it's at an angle to when the key goes in there. So these are definitely a little bit trickier when you're pulling levers out. Okay, so we've got, uh, we're gonna make sure when we put this back together that the levers are in the correct position. In this case, those two look very, very identical. And uh, then that's the shallow. So we would definitely have to have to watch our viewing window when we when we do that. And again, this side, same thing. Uh, these sprung out. So let's see. One, two, three. So this one's kind of a half cut because see halfway out and got bottom and top versus how the top goes all the way down. You got just a little bit of the bottom. So this cut would be like a number, just one being the shallowest, three being the deepest, this would be like a number two. And then we put this back on. Nope, put this back on. Now again, this may not even be the correct way that they, they are in there. I don't know if these have been taken apart and put back together incorrectly. That's also a shallow cut and that's why this pre-cut key like almost worked it because these are kind of these are almost I and mean, we could actually use that and just cut down the middle but we're not going to we're going to make it the right way those are all three the same that's that's honestly kind of a lame key but see how we go there and uh and it's not it's not quite hitting that lever so there's there's the problem with it, just using a key that's not quite right. It works great from one side, but when you go from the other, it misses that. So, all right, let's uh, get the key making, grinding. We're gonna go ahead and cut the chosen blank down. Uh, is this guy, oh, and wards. Yes, we do have wards. 
One question I had is the wards on one side, or does it matter if they're on, why, why doesn't it have wards on like the other side too? It's only on one side. That's, that's really only needed because if you're using the key from both sides, it has to have the cutouts on both sides of, of the key for it to just pass the ward. So using it from that side, boop, it's on the, it's on the inside side, and then, and then boop, and then it's on the outside side. So yeah, it doesn't, very, very rarely do I see wards on both sides of the case. And when I have, they have been offset, which means you need a slit here and then a slit here. Of course, like something like that would pass on both, but uh, yes, just to answer that, I have seen different warts. Very rare, especially in the U.S., but it can happen for sure. All right, let's get to cutting this guy down to pass the case. I think we're gonna have to true it up again, but not today. Got to get a new grinder one day. One of them ended up being a little kind of wonky, but it's a little, a little off. But it, 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 when you when you just clear it, it's, you still have to cut it down. So you want you want the key blank to like just clear it, so that when you're coming in with your finishing, you don't go too deep. All right, number what is this one? Three or four? Uh, okay, so. That seems to be needing to be cut down a bit. Let's put this cover back on temporarily. Did not measure the width needed as of yet. This one was hard to hard to get on. Let's, let's do the other one because that one was a little bit difficult to snap together. You can see the width is pretty darn close. Probably need to do a little touch up on the sides. And then of course we gotta cut the ward cut, which was the same for both. So that is not a big deal. We can go ahead and cut both of them at once. Yep, same, same position. Same position. Go ahead and take a look, see we can see there. We do need to go ahead and, and grind the whole side flat down just a bit because the shoulder stop between the two 
is not quite wide enough, I think. Let's see, is that the Lord doing that? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, in this case, we can go ahead and just hold it in position, grab a Sharpie. Just brought a fresh pack of Sharpies so that they can be lost. And now uh, we'll go ahead and mark our ward cut. It's hard to hold it for the camera here. Right in, right in kind of that area. Yeah. So that means also on the other side. And uh, then we'll hold our other one up. Let's see if it lines up. No, it's a whole different key. Look at that. Okay, so this guy goes to there. And this guy. Where are we? This guy goes to this one. Different. Different wards. Maybe that's what the three and the four mean. Just a little bit off from the other one. All right, so most people you can do this with just a file. I am going to use a machine for a lot of this for speed. this so off we were there uh, but we see it's, it's going in but it's not turning and that's a bit over and this needs to be some, a little bit overboard but once we file it down top mom got a clamp up here So we have it turning now. Boop. Boop. And then, uh, and then if we came in from the other side. Boop. So that one's good. Ready to be starting to get the cuts down. Let's check this troublesome guy here. And, boop, yep, 
And all righty. Let's see how they do in a closed situation. Oh, we've got a good turn. Got a good lift. And uh, yeah, it's just now a matter of cutting those cuts. So we're good there. Look at that, it almost, almost does it. Oh, and uh, we'll check one more thing. It's good. Good, making sure that we didn't cut it too far because we still have to, uh, we still have to square it up just a hair. All right, this guy was, didn't want to go back together very easily. So let's see what the problem is. Uh, why are you so stubborn? Oh, because this, that's actually those index notches to go into the case are kind of surprising, honestly. You don't see that too often. Thank goodness. Okay. Do we have boops? We have boops. So now it's just a matter of uh, of cutting those wards. Shouldn't be too bad. Both of them are pretty uh, pretty easy cuts, looks like. Now let's get started cutting the cuts. So with this particular setup, it passes by the bolt. And we see the third lever is pretty much right in the middle of the key blank. So since the bolt right there is offset, see the gap between the two, what happens is uh, you think that you're, you're cutting one and you're actually cutting another lever. So in this particular case, the third lever is going to be pretty much right in the center of the key blank. And it only needs to go down just a little bit, but... What does need to come down is the tip. So we need to leave everything alone except for the very center and the very tip cuts. And, and it would be tip on, on both sides. So stay on spring, stay there. Coming from this side of the lock. So you see where it contacts, contacts right there on the front. And it's not going all the way and then the center. So you have to do both outside edges. And the center cut. And typically it, it'll sometimes mark. I don't know if it's marked or not. Let's see. Let's see how we did with that one. It's all right. Uh, so 
looks like our third lever is oh there it goes it fell in oh yeah I think we just need to widen oh no let's see let's see we're gonna go ahead and give that bolt a helping hand with this highest quality turbine oil. You're perfectly okay to use a very lightweight oil since these are just moving parts. Go ahead and uh, oil this up just a bit. may ask why I use lubricant on some and oil on others. It's really just however I want to do it at that particular time. And now uh, this guy needed a little oil on here, didn't it? Troublesome little guys. Let's see how we do. So that third lever is uh, see how it had that little catch in there. I think our third lever is uh, needs to go down a bit and, and needs to be widened out just a bit too, so we'll go knock that out. Get in there. Okay, deeper in the center. So third cut. Just a little bit. Just a little bit deeper. Look, it's trying really hard. Okay, a little bit deeper. Should be it.
Okay, now time to finish the key with files. And that'll bring it down to where we need to be. Looks like we are right there on it. Just a little tight, but it's actually okay. It'll it'll get better as we go. Because we still have to do a little bit of finish filing on these edges. And that should clear up that tight problem.
Moving on to the next guy, which would be our happy face. Let me go ahead and turn the key and see what happens. So it looks like levers uh, one and two coming from the middle. We're gonna gotta, gotta cut the middle down just a bit. One beside it is uh, it's not as not as deep. So let's go ahead and cut down the middle. It looks like the height of the blade is gonna be sufficient on this one. So it looks like it's honestly just the uh, the middle cut there. Okay. I think that uh, <laughs> I think that knocks that one out. Beautiful, beautiful. So once again, we just gotta uh, touch these little spots up on it. Let's see which. Uh, let's see, there we go. Bye-bye, smiley face. I was not expecting that second one to go as quick as it did, but it did, so there we go, y'all. Number three and number four. I may stamp a little three and four on the head. We need a little one.
forgot, almost forgot this little guy, which is uh, pretty easily fixable, actually. We first need to withdraw the bolt. Put this down, just like that. Push them down. There we go. Nothing to it. And that would be it. So we've got keys made. They only wanted one of each one. We appreciate anybody who sends in stuff to get done like this. And uh, we're done. So thanks for watching y'all to another antique video. Uh, hope you enjoyed. We'll catch you next video. Make sure and smash that like button because uh, you need to. You need to. And subscribe if you haven't done so to watch more, I guess, cool stuff like this. Thanks for watching y'all.